Hi, this is Alan Spencer for Trailers from Hell. I'm going to talk to you about a movie, The Seven Faces of Dr. Lowe. I had the distinct pleasure of working on a sitcom with Tony Randall. He used his money from that sitcom to fund uh, activities uh, outside of the sitcom, much like Charlie Sheen, except uh, Tony used his money to fuel theater. So that was a very, very nice thing to do. He's a patron of the arts, very sophisticated man, and he was very proud of this movie that I got to talk to him a few times at length about because I loved it. Anyhow, here we are with the trailer for The Seven Faces of Dr. Lowe. An entire generation knows Tony Randall as Felix from TV's Odd Couple, but he was much more than that. He was a classically trained actor and reached a zenith in this movie, produced and directed by George Powell, The Seven Faces of Dr. Lowe. Based on a 1935 book by Charles G. Finney, uh, The Circus of Dr. Lowe, the screenplay is by Charles Beaumont of Twilight Zone fame, and this movie is definitely in that zone. Tony Randall plays the title character, a mysterious Chinese circus owner that rides into the Old West and starts having a magical, sometimes malevolent effect on the population. Tony plays several roles in a showcase usually reserved for Peter Sellers, who was in fact the director's first choice and Sellers was interested, but MGM was keener on Randall. There is an example coming up of Jim Danforth's model animation that uh, got nominated for an Academy Award. There it is. Now, never having seen Randall do this sort of thing before makes it much more intriguing because he's literally brilliant in this movie. He winds up playing Medusa with like animated snake hair and you're gonna see him doing that in a bit. That's him, that's him in a mirror. That's not a TV showing Michelle Bachman. Helping Tony Randall turn into an early Transformer is the extraordinary makeup work of William Tuttle who received an honorary Oscar for his efforts. Tony shaved his head and eyebrows, giving himself, in his own words, an unborn look, so Tuttle had the latitude of a blank slate to work with. Tony said uh, that once Tuttle applied his makeup magic, all preconceived notions of how to play the characters vanished, and he literally became these people he's mind-blowing to watch. And the female lead in this is Barbara Eden, who's pretty mind-blowing herself that she hasn't aged a day. Now, when people have tried to mash up fantasy in the Old West before, it hasn't always worked, but it does in this because the writing and execution are good. And Dr. Lowe uh, expresses lots of profundity, even mentors a young boy decades before Mr. Miyagi did, so there's heart in the movie. And uh, being a George Powell production means there's also lots of special effects and repurposed footage from some of his earlier productions like Atlantis, The Lost Continent, and The Time Machine. I mean, Hollywood has always been good at recycling, as you know. I saw this movie as a kid at a drive-in. I was astonished by the finale involving a tiny fish which turns into the Loch Ness Monster. And all the high-tech CGI in the world can't eclipse these old-school effects because they're used in service of a story and we're emotionally involved. Nevertheless, despite a top flight production and attractive cast, the greatest special effect in this film is Tony Randall. This is a tour de force for him. And truth be told, despite receiving top billing for all seven faces of Dr. Lowe, he did not play the abominable snowman. Now that was performed by George Powell's son, Peter. Still, Tony Randall does play seven roles. And what's interesting about this is the seventh is a cameo as himself. Uh, since he'd already shaved his head for the part, Tony Randall had to wear a wig to play Tony Randall. Hello, goodbye, thank you.